Welcome to a new data analysis tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about Pandas Profiling. This is a tool that is going to help us on doing data analysis with just a single line of code. We can both have our analysis results in notebooks or in file formats like HTML. I'm going to be explaining how it can be used, what kind of output it generates, and when it's useful. Let's start coding. So I'm in the VS code and you can use any code editor that you want. I'm going to start by creating a notebook like easy exploratory data analysis.ipmb. And now I'm going to firstly select my kernel Python 3.11.4 and I'm going to create a markdown like pandas profiling like this. Also, their new name is Y Data Profiling, like this. So, this is one of the tools that we can get a powerful exploratory data analysis with just one line of code. It generates an HTML report and we can open up both in the notebook or browser and we can use it. So, let's start directly. At the first place, we need to install Y Data Profiling. And in Jupyter Notebook, we can follow a step like we can say pip install ydata profiling like this. Actually, we need to type it like this. Or what we can do is we can go to the terminal and we can say if you are using Windows, you need to say pip. I'm using a Mac, so I will say pip3 install ydata profiling. And I already have it on my system, so I don't need to redownload, but you can download it like this. So after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with doing my import. So we are going to need pandas numpy and of course ydata profiling import profile report like this. So this is the class that we are going to be initializing and at the first place I'm going to create a data. We are also going to get a real world data from scikit-learn but I'm going to start with a synthetic one. So I'm going to say n is going to be thousand so it's going to be the number of rows and I'm going to get a code to create a data set. I prepared it before the video and I'm going to show you. Here is the code and we are going to have age, gender, income, city, purchased sign up date and score on our data. So it's going to be more like a real world data set and it's going to be a great data set for use in this tutorial. So here I create it and I'm going to turn it into a pandas data frame using pd data frame and I will paste the data like this. Now we can call data frame.head and here we can see that we have a data with the columns age, gender, income, city, purchase, sign up date and score. And let's see the shape on this. And we have 1000 rows with seven columns like this. You can see that. So normally, if we want to do data analysis, we need to do stuff like data frame describe and data frame info. Data frame is now dot sum or data frame, let's say gender dot value count. But we can get all of this and more with one line. So for that, we will say profile and it's going to be profile report. And for creating that, we are going to pass the data frame firstly. Next, we are going to give a title like data profiling. And what we can do is let's say report and I'm going to set the explorative as true. So now, our report is going to be get created and we can use this both in the Jupyter Notebook and on the HTML format and we can take a look at it on the browser. So firstly, let's display the report in a Jupyter Notebook. I will say profile dot to notebook I frame and when I make this run, we are going to see that it's going to be running in the background and here is our report. So here we can take a look at a report from here it gives statistics and more but on this video I'm not going to show you this on the Jupyter notebook and what else I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this one like let's say from here I will say 
clear cell outputs and I'm not going to use this one I will say profile I'm going to create an HTML report like to file and I will say profile report dot HTML and I'm going to make this run and now our report is exported in here you can see that we have an HTML file and now I'm going to open this on browser simply go to this direction and open this with the browser that you want to use I'm going to be opening this with Google Chrome and I'm going to be recording the Chrome screen in a second right now so here is our report by pressing to the right upper side we can see the sections in here and it's going to get us to the parts of the page but I'm going to go one by one so I get to the top side and here we can see that it says brought to you by Y data and we can directly start analyzing our data in here so here we can see that we have data set statistics which gives the number of variables number of observations missing sales missing sales percentage duplicate rows duplicates rows as percentage total size in memory and average record size in memory and at the right side we can see that we have variable types and we can see numeric 3, categorical 2, boolean 1 and date 10 1 and here we have a section as reproduction and it gives the analysis details like this and here and here we can see that how long did it take to create this report and now I'm going to continue on the report we can see that we can go column wise and let's start with the age so for every column we have distinct distinct percentage missing value missing value percentage infinite infinite percentage the mean minimum maximum zeros zeros percentage negative negative percentage and memory size and here we can see a histogram of this the distribution and we have more details section now I press that and we can see that for this column we have the quantile statistics like the minimum 5th percentile 1 median q3 95th percentile maximum range and IQR also we have the descriptive statistics standard deviation coefficient of variation courtesis mean mean absolute deviation skewness sum variance and monotonicity so we have histogram just like in here a bigger version and we have the common values in here the percentages and we have the extreme values in here so we have the minimum 10 values and maximum 10 values and at the 8th side we can see that 9 in, in here let's say 66 appeared 14 times which has the frequency of 1.4 percent okay seems great so let's continue with the other columns like I'm going to select the gender here we have a text column so we have this thing missing and I'm going to go with the more details we can see that it gives the maximum length so now the statistics are for a text data which means that it gives the lengths and the character counts and it gives the unique unique percentage and here we have question one explains what this means and we have distinct categories distinct scripts and more so we have categories in here we have male and female and here we can see that female appeared more we can see the length and we have the common values in here words we have two characters we can see the only is character wise like this great so we can see that it's really good for both text and numeric data and we can get this for others too like score purchase city and it's generating report based on the data type of that column okay I'm not going to look all of them one by one let's continue we can see that we have the interactions in here so let's say age with score age with income income with age we can see the scatter plots in here score in age score and income for the numeric columns we can get a scatter plot like this now I'm going to continue here we can see that we have a correlations table like this and we can see that age is correlated with income really really weakly so we have a really weak correlation in here remember correlation can take value between 1 and minus 1 
one means positive relationship minus one means negative relationship and a value closer to zero means they are not really related okay so we also have correlations i'm going to continue we have the missing value section we don't have any missing values in this data set so it's not important for this data set but in real world data sets we are going to have a lot of missing values so this section also helps us to understand and here I'm going to continue with the sample. We can see that it gives the sample the first 10 rows and last 10 rows. And this is our profile report. This is a really good example of getting a quick overview of the data set with a simple one line of code. Let's go back to the code editor. Okay, so let's do this with a real world data set. I will say from scikit-learn that data sets import load iris. And next, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say iris is going to be load iris like this. And I'm going to make this as a data frame. So iris data frame is going to be pandas data frame iris dot data and columns is going to be iris dot features like this feature names. And now let's take a look at the iris data frame and I will call the head. Here we can see that we have the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And also let's add a target like iris data frame. And I'm going to say target like this. And it's going to be iris.target like this. So now we are going to have something like this. Okay, great. Also, I'm going to go with the tail too. Yeah, we have zero, one, two, and Let's see what else we have on the target side. And I will pass unique like this. And actually it needs parentheses like this. I just state a frame unique. And we have zero, one, two as classes. Okay, so let's profile this one. I will say iris profile, and it's going to be profile report, iris data frame, title let's say like iris data set profiling and we can set explorative as true like this now what i'm going to do is i will say let's make this run first the iris profile to file again and iris profile dot html like this now we are going to see that at the left side like this and now I'm going to open this on the Google Chrome again and show you the report. So now we had the profile report for the iris data set and let's talk about that. So at the overview side we can see the data set statistics, variable types. I'm not going to talk all of them one by one. I'm just going to take a quick look like right now we have alerts and let's take a look at them. So it says data set has one 0.7% duplicate rows. So it's a common scenario in real world data sets. So it's nice to get information in this notification type. So in here we can see that we have the alerts of petal length is highly overall correlated with petal width and two other field. So we have other three high correlation alerts and it says target is uniformly distributed. Great. So we have the alert section which gives us knowledge like this. So let's go with the reproduction. Now it says the duration is 1.2 seconds. And I'm going to continue. Sepal length, it gives the high correlation alert in here too. And I'm going to go with the target. We can see that we have information like high correlation and uniform. And we have the interactions. Yeah, we can see that they are like correlated and Okay, so let's go with the collation. Now we can see that we get the collation numbers closer to one and at table view, we can see that we have high collations. At the missing value side, we have the matrix like this and count like this. We don't have any missing value in here too. And at the sample side, we can see the first 10 and last 10 rows. And as extra, we had the duplicate rows in here it shows it as a summary at the end of the report. Great.
So the alert section has came up when we use a real world data which has problems. Great. So in this video we talked about how we can create profile reports easily with one line of code. Here we started with creating a data set and then we created the profile report with an iris data set. So we are going to use pandas profiling when we want a quick understanding of our data before any future engineering or model training for reporting purposes or sharing with non-technical stakeholders. And I want to mention that it's not that great for real-time or automated pipelines. Using lighter tools or custom exploratory data analysis for those is going to be better. That was it for this video. Let's get to the outro. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I'm sharing new data science videos every week on my channel. You can subscribe for more videos like this. Also, I have a playlist named Data Analysis Tutorials where I have more than 40 videos just like this one. You can reach that playlist from the cards of this video or from the links in the description. Have a great day.